Yeah, hi friends, my name is Rip Chandan and welcome back to my channel uh, Energy and Environment Education. Uh, friends, this video is very important for those aspirants who are looking forward to take exam, energy management exam or energy auditor exam in this year or coming years. So uh, this is the third part of the chapter electrical system. Already I have uh, made videos on the first two part, the part A and part B. So those who have missed the uh, first two parts, they may go through the first two parts. And the link I will be providing in the comment section. And this is the third part of the electrical system. In the first part, I have discussed about the electrical system or about uh, the electrical generation. Uh, also, the transmission distribution part I have discussed there. Also, transformer part, the main questions that can come, I mean, the objective type questions and the short answer type questions or the long answer, the numericals, different formulas which are important for you on this part of the chapter. Those things I have discussed in the first video. In the second video, I have basically discussed about the power factor, important formulas that can come in the exam. I mean, formula based questions also, which are important for you to understand, to exercise those numericals, uh, which are important for you. Also, the objective type questions or short answer type questions or true false type questions, which are important for you. Those things I have discussed there. Apart from this, also the causes of low power factor, then power factor correction methods, different cost benefits, etc. All these things I have discussed in the second part of the video so first and second part of the video is very important to understand and this part of the video i am dealing with the other aspects of the chapter which are really important for you to understand and this can come in the examination so let's start the video friends Uh, so let's start with the content first friends so in the content uh, basically i'm going to start with the electricity billing part of the chapter then i'm going also going to discuss about the electrical load management and maximum demand control part and the very uh, and again the very important part that is the demand side management or dsm that also i'm going to discuss uh, with you in this particular video also the last part will be the harmonics or the power quality part so these four uh, parts of the chapter i'm going to discuss in this particular video friends and hope uh, this uh, this will help you to prepare your exam this will help you to understand all the objective type questions which can come in the exam or the short essay type questions or long essay type questions or numericals which can come in the exam those, those things also i'll be explaining you and hopefully i hope these things will help you uh, in the upcoming exam friends so let's start with the electricity billing first uh, as far as electricity billing is concerned, friends, it's a very important part of the chapter where you may be asked to uh, briefly explain the tariff structure and the various components it has. So please mug up all these components which I have listed out here, uh, which are visible on the screen. So uh, they may ask you to only list out uh, the different components or maybe you may be asked to briefly explain all of these components. Uh, so this is a very important part uh, as far as the uh, short answer type questions is concerned, friends. Uh, also, this is very important, the electrical load management and the maximum demand control. So you may expect a, a, a short answer type questions again or a part of long answer type questions from this part of the chapter, friends. So they may ask you to briefly explain the what is electrical load management all about or they may also ask you to uh, I mean explain the what is maximum demand controller or what is maximum demand control all about and uh, the different steps uh, uh, to uh, control the maximum demand you can say or to manage the load or electrical load management. So these are the steps friends you must remember. So uh, they, they may ask you to briefly explain either all the steps or maybe, maybe some of the steps or uh, you may be asked to briefly explain them. So the steps are like the load curve generation, then rescheduling of loads, storage of products, uh, shedding of non-essential loads, operation of captive generation and diesel digital sets, reactive power compensation. So all these six steps are there which can be uh, used to control the maximum demand. So a brief explanation of each of the steps is given in the chapter friends in the book. Uh, so you may refer the chapter and hope uh, it's not very tough to understand these points. So I'm not going to explain you in detail here friends. But it's a very important part of the chapter and you can expect uh, really exp expect some questions uh, at least a short answer type question or part of long answer type questions from this part of chapter friends. Uh, again friend this is a very important formula and also a very simple one where you may be asked to calculate the maximum demand uh, uh, recorded for a period of time. So you must remember this formula and the calculation and uh, you may expect to have some objective questions where formula based numericals will be asked and also some part of short answer type question friends so please remember this uh, calculation and the form, uh, formula for calculating the maximum demand uh, recorded for a period of time 
friends now coming to the uh, demand side management that is dsm so you may be asked to uh, give the dsm objectives so the key objectives of dsm include the following uh, improving the efficiency of the energy systems uh, reduce financial needs to build up uh, new energy facilities uh, minimize adverse environmental impacts uh, lower the cost of delivered energy to consumers reduce power shortages and power cuts improve the reliability and quality of power supply so these are the different objectives for the demand side management so i am not going to explain you again friend this is very simple and you can refer the book where everything is given there uh, so you may be asked to only list out the objectives of dsm or maybe they may ask you to briefly explain each of the objectives of dsm so you may expect uh, the part of long answer type questions or maybe a uh, part of short answer type questions friends so please uh, do uh, mug up all these objectives and this may come in the exam and very important for you to i mean uh, understand and uh, to remember all these objectives friends also you may refer the book friend where the chap in the chapter it is given the dsm methodology so these are the different steps uh, which you must remember so you may be asked to briefly explain the different steps of dsm methodology which are the step one is the load research the second one is the uh, define load shape objectives the third one is the assess program implementation strategies fourth is the implementation and fifth is the monitoring evaluation so briefly uh, uh, brief explanation of all these steps are already given in the chapter so you may refer the book friend and please uh, do make up all these uh, five steps where you may be asked only to list out the steps or maybe briefly explain each of the steps for DSM methodology friends. So this is a very important part again for the uh, uh, examination point of view. Also you may expect a question from DSM uh, like types of DSM programs. So this is also an important part uh, in case of the demand side management based question is concerned friends. So you may be asked to give the different types of uh, DSM programs and briefly explain them so these are the two types energy reduction programs and load management programs so you must remember all the both the uh, two types of uh, decent programs and also a brief explanation on each of the uh, types of decent program which is already given in the chapter friends Again, friend, this is very important. Uh, the benefits of DSM. So you may expect uh, some question like uh, short answer type questions or match the following question from uh, benefits of DSM. So you must remember all these benefits at different different uh, section. Like suppose customer benefits is satisfy artistic demands, reduce stabilized costs, or will improve value of service, maintain improved lifestyle and productivity. Again, in the case of societal benefits, you have reduction of environmental degradation, uh, conserve resources protect global environment, uh, maximize customer welfare, in the case of utility benefits, lower cost of service, improve operating efficiency and flexibility, reduce capital needs, improve customer service. So all the different different benefits uh, for customers, society and utility, which you get with the help of uh, DSM, demand side management. So you must remember all this uh, list of the different benefits. And also you may expect uh, some questions, a uh, part of long answer type questions uh, also uh, or short answer type questions and the match the following type questions from this part of the chapter friends. So you must remember all this list of benefits from DSM. And coming to harmonious part of the chapter friends, uh, not so many questions you may expect uh, from this part of the chapter, but still you may expect to have some questions like what is harmonics all about and uh, briefly explain what is harmonics or maybe you may ask be asked to uh, give the major causes of harmonics or the list out the uh, causes of harmonics or the problems due to high harmonics or also just to explain briefly explain the steps to overcome harmonics so you may expect some questions from harmonics not too many uh, but uh, you should understand what is harmonics all about and for that only i have uh, shared you a very short clip here to better understand what is harmonics all about friends so let's see the video first harmonics is a critically important concept in electronics harmonics affect the quality of ac electricity delivered to homes and facilities and the performance of equipment that uses this electricity harmonics can increase energy costs and reduce the lifespan of hardware in some cases Harmonics can overheat electrical conductors, creating a fire risk. In this video, we briefly explain what harmonics are and why you should care about them. To begin, let's consider a mathematical concept called the periodic wave. This is a graphical representation of a constantly changing variable whose values follow a repeated sequence. A familiar example is the sine wave shown on the screen. When we examine a sine wave, one of the first things we notice is that it follows a very symmetrical and repeated pattern. Each full wave has a certain length, call its wavelength. The time required for one wavelength to complete a cycle is called its period. 
from which we derive the term periodic wave. Periodic waves are found in a wide variety of natural phenomena, including ocean waves, sound, and light. Electricity transmitted over the public power grid can also be graphed as periodic waves. A perfectly regular and symmetrical sine wave represents a very simple and clean example of a periodic wave. In the real world, however, periodic waves are subject to numerous influences that can affect their shapes. These can produce waves that display distortions and asymmetries, as shown on the screen. To understand how this happens, it might be useful to work backwards and deconstruct this wave into its constituent components. A periodic wave, no matter how distorted, can be defined as the composite of a single primary or fundamental wave and one or more so-called harmonic waves of varying wavelengths. For example, our illustration can be deconstructed into two waves, the fundamental wave and a harmonic wave whose wavelength is one-third the fundamental. The second wave is therefore called the third harmonic. The combination of these two waves, the fundamental and the third harmonic, produces the distorted wave shown in our example. Adding additional harmonics results in further distortion in the waveform. The presence of all these individual harmonics can be expressed as total harmonic distortion, or THD. The mathematical formulas for calculating THD are shown on the screen. Fortunately, modern test instruments designed for measuring harmonics can perform these calculations automatically and display the results, greatly simplifying the process of monitoring THD in a facility. In an electrical power line, a number of factors can create harmonic distortion. These include currents introduced into the line by users of nonlinear loads, environmental causes such as lightning, electromagnetic interference, and others. As a result, the AC electricity delivered to a facility can include a significant percentage of THD. In addition to the fundamental sinusoidal electricity produced by the power generation plant, the higher the THD, the more distorted the electricity's waveform. This can be a problem for electrical equipment designed to operate optimally when provided with clean, undistorted AC power. A high percentage of THD can stress electrical infrastructure and equipment, resulting in a significant amount of electricity dissipated as excess heat. Left unaddressed, harmonic distortion can produce numerous issues, such as system underperformance, shortened hardware life, wasted electricity, and increased electrical costs. In extreme cases, THD can increase the risk of personal injury to operators and damage to facilities. THD can also raise regulatory considerations. A number of guidelines exist, such as IEEE 519-2014, that define how much harmonic distortion is allowed for certain types of facilities. Strict adherence to these specifications can be an essential business requirement for many organizations. And also this uh, particular chart is very important friend where you may be asked to give the given different causes and possible effects and solutions to some of the uh, electrical problems which are highlighted here friends. So for example the voltage imbalance is one of the problems, electrical problems. So what are the different causes uh, due to which voltage imbalance takes place and what are the possible effects uh, and the solutions to minimize the voltage imbalance. So these type of questions you may be asked uh, as a short answer type questions or maybe match the following based question also may be expected from this particular uh, part of the chapter friends. So please uh, I mean uh, uh, understand all these uh, different causes, uh, effects and solutions to all these uh, different problems, electrical problems which are highlighted friends. So you may expect some questions from this part also. And with this friend I'm ending the third part of the chapter and also this is the end of the chapter electrical systems. I, I hope uh, you may have got some benefit with the inputs that I've shared with you uh, in the three videos of uh, on, which I made on the electrical system. And now uh, I'll be sharing the uh, another video that will be on based on the chapter number 3.2, that is electrical motors. So please stay connected with me for the chapter 3.2 electric motors, which I'm going to upload in few days, friends. And last not the least, friend, please do connect with me. Uh, this is my email ID. Uh, C H A N D A N Chandan Sudhir 07 at gmail.com. So, you may have some inputs uh, which you want to share with me, or any suggestions if you want to share with me, or any kind of support if you want to have from me. Please do write uh, 
from this email ID and also my mobile number is there 9350095167 this is my mobile number where you can uh, uh, contact me if you want to have any support from me or if you want to have any suggestion from me so please do connect with me from friends on this email ID and mobile number also you can refer my website takegreensteps.com where I have posted some blogs and also going to post few num uh, new blogs on this website so that you can refer for your I mean understanding so please do connect with me friends and uh, uh, also uh, please subscribe my channel friends it will motivate me to prepare more such videos and posts in the coming days and also please press the bell icon such that uh, you get the notification as soon as I post a uh, new videos that I am going to make and uh, uh, post in coming days and also please to share with your friends uh, your colleagues uh, whoever you think this uh, video can help them to I mean, prepare in a better way the examination the PW examination friends so uh, let's meet uh, with you uh, on another video that I am going to post uh, so that's all for today friends and thanks for watching the video